we will consider the first part of the VFD, which is the rectifier. In this part, we find six diodes in parallel. I'll title these one to six as follows. Each of the three phases is connected to one pair of diodes. As we know, electricity needs to get back to its source to complete the circuit. So in this setup, the current will flow through the load and back to the source using another phase. Remember, it can do this because the current in each phase flows forwards and backwards at a different time. We'll see this in detail in just a moment. The load can be anything, a lamp, a motor, or an entire circuit. In this case, it will just represent the rest of our VFD circuit. The electricity will continue to alternate in the supply phases, but the diodes will only allow the peak phase to pass and will block the others. So I'm just going to animate these ones. Okay, let's see this in action. Phase one is first. This comes in and can only flow in one direction, which is through diode one. It then passes through the load. Once the current passes through the load, it will then need to get back to the source. And as phase two is in the negative half of its cycle, the current will flow through diode six into phase two. In the next segment, we see the current is still flowing in phase one and diode one, but now phase three is in its negative half. So the current switches and the flow returns through this phase via diode two. In the next segment, phase two is approaching its peak. So the current now flows through this phase and through diode three. It then flows through the load and back into phase three via diode two. In the next segment, the current flows still in phase two via diode three but phase one is now at its negative peak, so the current will flow through diode four back into phase one. In the next segment, we see that phase three is now approaching its positive peak. So the current flows through this phase via diode five, it then flows through the load and then returns via diode four into phase one. Finally, the current flows through phase three via diode five, through the load and then back into phase two via diode six. This cycle just repeats constantly like this. The oscilloscope for the three phase supply will see three sine waves for the AC electricity. But the oscilloscope on the load will see this as a rough DC electricity with some ripples in it. Now we need to smooth out those ripples to clean up the DC electricity. For this we connect a capacitor across the positive and the negative. This capacitor is like a storage tank and will absorb electrons when there is excess, and it will inject electrons when there is a reduction. This will therefore smooth out the ripples in the DC electricity to a nice smooth signal on the oscilloscope. We have covered capacitors in great detail previously. Do check that video out, links down below. Now that we have clean DC, we're ready to turn that back into precisely controlled AC at variable frequency. And for that, we need an inverter. An inverter is basically a number of IGBTs, which are switches that can turn on and off super fast. I'm going to animate this using some simple switches instead of IGBTs, just to make it easier to visualize. I'll number these switches as follows. To get our three phases, we need to open and close switches in pairs to direct the flow of current from our supply and a return pass. That way the connected motor will experience alternating current. Remember AC is where the current reverses, so if we took a lamp and connected it to some switches and a DC power source, we can control the direction of current through the lamp by opening and closing switches in the right order. Therefore, the lamp experiences alternating current even though it's coming from a DC supply. For the three phase supply, we time the switches to simulate the three phases. Let's see how this works. First of all, we close switches one and six. This will give us phase one to phase two. Then we close switches one and two. This will give us phase one to phase three. Then we close switches three and two. This will give us phase two and phase three. Then we close switches three and four. That will give us phase two and one. Then we close switches five and four, and this will give us phase three and phase one. And finally, we close switches five and six, and this will give us phase three and phase two. This cycle repeats again and again like so. If we check this with the oscilloscope, we now have a pattern that looks like a C sine wave, although it's just a little bit square. This will work fine for some applications, but not all. So how can we improve this? Do you remember earlier in the video, I said we can open and close the switch at different speeds and durations to change the waveform? Well, we can do that with this too. 
What we do is use a controller to rapidly open and close the switches multiple times per cycle in a pulsating pattern, each pulse varying in width. This is known as pulse width modulation. The cycle is broken up into multiple smaller segments. Each segment has a total amount of current that could flow. But by rapidly pulsating the switches, we control the amount of flow occurring per segment. This will result in an average current per segment. And we can see that this increases and decreases, thus giving us a wave pattern. The load therefore experiences a sine wave. The more segments we have, the closer it will mimic a sine wave. We can control the output voltage by controlling how long the switches are closed for. So we could, for example, output 240 volts or 120 volts just by trimming the opening and closing times. We can control the frequency by controlling the timing of the switches. So we could, for example, output 60 hertz, 50 hertz, or 30 hertz, whatever is needed for the application. Remember, by controlling the frequency, we control the rotational speed of the motor. So coming back to our VFD circuit, we're going to use the controller to rapidly open and close the switches to vary the output frequency and voltage. So by combining the rectifier, the filter, and the inverter, we therefore get our variable frequency drive. And this is what is used to control the speed of electrical motors and unlock energy savings in all sorts of systems. Okay guys, that's it for this video, but to continue your learning, then check out one of the videos on screen now and I'll catch you there for the next lesson. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, as well as the engineeringmindset.com.